Anybody still excited about Jesus today? As always, incredible, incredibly honored to be here. I'm your cousin now. We family, so glad to be here. I want to I want to ease into um, this introduction by articulating a truth that I think is extremely important yet often overlooked, and that is God has plans for you. I know that sounds like some regular religious rhetoric or some cheesy church colloquialism, but I can say that with confidence because I eavesdropped on a conversation that God was having with Israel through a gentleman named Jeremiah. And he says to Israel through Jeremiah in Jeremiah 29 verse 11, he says, for I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. And the profundity of this prophetic proclamation rests not just in what Jeremiah says, but when Jeremiah says this. He says this in a season in the life of Israel where they are oppressed and they are suppressed and they are depressed and they are discouraged and they are disoriented they are discombobulated they are in a season of exile and in the midst of their chaos their calamity their confusion and their concern God taps Jeremiah on the shoulder and tells him text my people this. <laughs> I've got plans. I know they're confused, but I've got plans. I know they're hurting, but I've got plans. I know they're disoriented, but tell them I've got plans. Let them know that I've got plans for tomorrow that are nothing like there today. Let them know that I've got plans for their future that are nothing like their present. And when my plans are fulfilled, they will prosper. They will have a hope and a future. And I believe this prophetic promise is not just limited to Israel in their exile, but it includes you and I in our exile. And we not, may not be in an exile literally, but we are in a season of exile metaphorically because exile can represent being taken from that which is familiar and dropped into that which is unfamiliar. And if anyone were to objectively audit the last few years of our life in the church, I think we could agree without arguing that we've been snatched from the familiar and dropped into the unfamiliar. We're dealing with unfamiliar organizational realities, unfamiliar institutional realities, unfamiliar sociological realities, unfamiliar economic realities, unfamiliar racial realities, and therefore resorting to old methods doesn't work, and resorting to old maps doesn't work, and using old mindsets doesn't work, and resorting to old models doesn't work. And seasons like this expose that sometimes our faith has been in formulas and not in the Father. Because formulas only work in the familiar. But God, by his grace and in his providence, does not leave us without instruction when we are in exile. In the same chapter in Jeremiah, before he makes this prophetic promise to them, he gives them instruction on what to do in exile. And the instruction he gives them can be encapsulated in one word. He tells them, build. 
He says in Jeremiah 29, verse 4, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to those I've carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. It is as if God is saying to them, this is a new normal. And I need you to embrace it. You're going to be here for a while. If you are waiting on things to resort back to old patterns, if you are waiting for things to get back to normal, you're going to be dealing with Israel, a, a degree and a dimension of frustration because uh, frustration is a result of failed expectations. And so God attempts to limit their frustration by aligning their expectations as it relates to what normal is for them now. He says, settle down. It's not going back to the way it used to be. 